In Costa Rica, there are over 80 families of moths, and at least 15,000 different species. The diversity of moths in Costa Rica is just phenomenal. For example, almost every individual you see here on this wall is a different species. The moths are in the same order as the butterflies, Lepidoptera, which means the scaly wings. Together they make up about 10% of all the animal species. Our attention is usually on the butterflies since they are more colorful and fly in the day. While moths are more similar than different to butterflies, there are some loose rules to tell them apart. It's tricky at times. Moths are mostly nocturnal, not as colorful, and tend to have hefty bodies. Their antennae can be thread-like or feathered. Most moths have specialized hooks that link the hind wing to the forewing. Moths go through complete metamorphosis. They lay eggs, which hatch into caterpillars, that eventually form cocoons or pupa. However, some caterpillars form protective mobile homes, which after the road trip, serve to pupate in. Others pupate in the ground in more slick and shiny structures. Moths go back some 250 million years in the fossil record. That's 150 million more than butterflies. Moths have been incredibly successful, and in most places in the world, they are 10 times more species diverse than butterflies. Our experience with moths is usually limited to what's around the patio light. And why do they go to the lights? Well, after millions of years of evolving celestial navigation that relies on the moon and stars, the advent of electricity and the massive use of light bulbs has really messed up their sense of direction. To moths, Thomas Edison had a really bad idea. Now, some lights can be a good thing. Now, some think that black lights are just good for parties, but they're really effective at bringing in moths, too. This makes it easy to survey moth populations. Combining both activities works even better. As moths know, many strange things happen at night, especially when it comes to the use of pheromones to attract mates. The night is full of smells, many of which are picked up by horny males that use them to find the females. These perfumes are produced by the glands and hairs on the body and wings. Their chemistry is complex, but so effective that they are sometimes detected more than a mile away by the male's antennae. By comparison, the human sense of smell stinks. But it's still useful. What's that smell? Oh, what did that dog eat? My God. To maintain good reception, Many moths have a special projection on the front leg that they use to clean their antennae and mouth parts with. Moths are heavyweight ecological players. For example, most of the herbivory in a tropical forest is the result of caterpillar munching. One species is even called the skeletonator. The larval stage, or caterpillar, is often more colorful and more ecologically interesting than the adult stage. Caterpillars are gobbled up by all sorts of predators in the tropics. A major cause of death comes from parasitoid wasps and flies. They lay eggs onto or in a caterpillar. The resulting larvae slowly eat the caterpillar hollow, starting with the non-vital parts first. The enemy within. To avoid getting parasitized by a wasp, or ending up as some monkey's appetizer, they have evolved a multitude of defense strategies, such as diving off a leaf into the abyss, and then waiting until the bad guys leave.
Other caterpillar defenses include spines tipped with histamines, body chemistry that makes them taste horrible, some butterfly caterpillars shoot out a stink horn loaded with butyric acid, an all too familiar smell. Oof. This paracopus moth can foam its enemy with irritating fluid. Many mimic other animals that can cause harm, like snakes. or look like less tasty food options. To avoid the evil eye of a predator, a caterpillar can roll up inside a leaf. Then there is the safety in numbers strategy. The adults also have problems. One major threat comes from bats. Many moths hit the dirt when hearing any high-pitched sounds. Shaking your keys really pulls their chain. Some species survive because they mimic wasps in form, color, and behavior. This species mimics a foul-tasting net wing beetle. And this moth is a good mimic of this bad-tasting butterfly. And the ultimate is this moth that is a spitten image of a ferocious shrew, a small but aggressive mammal. Other species are flashers. The phony eye trick really does work. The reoccurring idea of bird doo-doo works for adults too. But generally moths depend on some sort of camouflage to stay alive, like the chunk of bark look. When certain species are attacked, they fall to the ground like a leaf. And then, it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Damn, that's a different moth. However, many of the day flying moths are bad tasting and proudly advertise the fact. The nasty substances that evolved to make them taste like crapola come from plants like this milkweed. A few of these chemicals, such as tannins, are useful for other purposes. The majority of moth species are difficult to identify, and many look similar. But remember, distinctions are all in the eye of the beholder. Dude, I hate watching these nature films. All these primates look alike, man. Hey, is that a white face? No, man. That's the white face. As with many insects, wing venation is important for identification. But moths have their wings covered with scales, which makes identification more difficult. Now removing the scales is quite rude. So like the butterflies, try to use a general gestalt approach to identify the families. If you are the intrusive type, put a drop of alcohol on the wing and the venation should be more apparent. This family includes the famous silkworm moth of China. At rest, they keep their hind wings away from their thorax and hold the abdomen upward or to the side. Since most moth adults are nocturnal, one more often than not sees the cat. 
and in many species the caterpillars are more beautiful than the adults. Their drab adults often have window-like dots on the forewing. Tiger moths are a large family with many brightly colored members. This species here is an obvious wasp mimic, while this one would be hard to spot as it rests on a lichen or on a wedding dress. All these flamboyant colored species are avoided by predators due to their bad taste. Other tiger moths stay alive by wing waving, foaming out nasty body fluids, or emitting high-pitched sounds that must translate to bats as booger off, buddy. Most are nocturnal, but some fly in the day. Many tiger moth caterpillars have long hairs, like the woolly bears. Inchworm moths are a diverse group of small to medium species that are cryptically colored. Geometrids lay their eggs on a wide variety of host plants. Oops. More noticeable are their caterpillars, which are always fun to watch. Many are stupendous mimics of branches. The trick requires lots of good pressure, which is not always easy to maintain. Ghost moths are a very old and primitive family. When these large moths come to lights at night, some folks swear they're ghosts. The adults have no mouth, so they don't feed. The big abdomen of the females are just chock full of their eggs. She can lay 30,000 eggs in her short lifetime. The outrageous silk nests of the lappet moth caterpillars are certainly more eye-catching than their adults. Many of the caterpillars have silken hairs that are tufted and contain toxic substances that can cause a rash or a rash of fury against the caterpillar. The adults are stout and medium size with drab colors and covered with hair-like scales. The slug moths, sometimes called shag moths, but not by the British, are heavy-bodied dull moths with relatively small wings and often with no feeding mouth parts. The caterpillars, on the other hand, are lots of fun, but not to touch. Are retracted into the thorax, sometimes making it difficult to figure out what's what. Some of their caterpillars have evolved away their legs and just schmooze along with a wave-like motion. The tropical slug moths have caterpillars that look like gummy bears. The adults, on the contrary, are quite cuddly. Flannel moths are small to medium moths that have heavy, hair-like soft scales that make them quite attractive. They're another family that doesn't feed as adults. Their caterpillars have stinging hairs that give a fiery burn on contact. This one is known as the mouse. Stay away from the mouse. Why is it that owners always look like their pets? The sack bearer moths are known for the architectural feats of their caterpillars, which construct mobile cases out of leaves and massive quantities of silk. This panzer tank strategy is effective against predators, but the case is light and easy to pull around. Some species of the adults have hook tips of their forewings. 
The owlet moths, or cutworm moths, include the witches. The white witch, seen here, is one of the largest Lepidoptera in the world and can measure nearly a foot. This is the most diverse and well-known family of moths, with thousands of species. The black witch is much more common than the white witch. The black witch flies like a bat, so you add it up. Bat, black, flies at night, and you get several superstitions. In Mexico, if one flies into a house, any sick person there will shortly die. The caterpillars of some species are called cutworms, and they are ruthlessly massacred by gardeners. The prominents are a diverse family of medium-sized to large moths that have rather elongate wings and are gray or brown. Nice mohawk. Plume moths are small, long-legged, thin gray or brown moths that have divisions in the fore and hind wings. The fore wing is split into two and the hind wing three, that is in most species. When at rest, the wings are rolled up. The smaller the target, the better. Pyralid moths comprise a large family of rather small moths. Their labial palps extend upward to such an extent they have the name of snout moths. But they're also called sloth moths because one species lives in the fur of both two-toed and three-toed sloths. More than a hundred of these moths can inhabit a sloth. Contrary to belief, the caterpillars don't feed on the algae on the sloth's hair, but rather on their dung. Pyralids often have a triangular look and the tongue has lots of scales. They are one of the few moth families that can hear. They do so with a tympana or ear-like structure on their belly. This helps them to detect bats and other predators. Close wing moths are called such because some species roll up their wings then look like sticks. And many species have larvae that are grasses and sugar cane. There are many, many families of very small moths, the Microlepidoptera. This family, the closed moth family, is common on household walls in Costa Rica. The caterpillars build mobile homes out of debris or sand. They feed on human hair and sloughed off skin. Thus, bathrooms are a food-rich habitat. Whoa, watch this guy make his move. This large family of small moths includes a few infamous species such as the codling moth of North America, whose caterpillar is a major pest on apples and other fruits. Tortricids have square-tipped forewings and hold their wings roof-like. Now there are a lot of beans in Costa Rica, but none that jump. In northern Mexico, Mexican jumping beans bounce around when the caterpillar and tortricid moth thrash around inside the seed. A very conspicuous family are the silk moths. Many of their caterpillars have spines with urticating barbs or hairs that can cause pain and rashes. As adults, men themselves by flashing eye spots to make them seem bigger than they really are. Resting on a tree trunk, they have good camouflage, but if bothered by a predator or a jerk with a stick, they flash these large, bloodshot eyes right in your face. 
This species is trying to convince you that its abdomen looks like a wasp that's in a really bad mood. Like all caterpillars, they produce silk. As they walk along, they lay down a bed of silk strands and hook their feet into it, like a mountain climber. This Copiopteryx moth certainly has the longest tails for a silk moth in Costa Rica. This Arsenurid moth emits pheromones from scent hairs that thrust from its body. The windowpane moth is a huge species that often comes to lights. Since its caterpillars can eat a variety of plants, including garden species, it's actually quite common. The Aztecs associated this moth with fire because the windows reminded them of obsidian or flint shards from which fire is started. These moths lack many scales on their wings, and they fly during the day, and many mimic wasps. The way their hind wing hooks onto the forewing is even like that of wasps. Sphinx, or hawk moths, are large moths that can hover. This white-banded sphinxlet, a day-flying species, is easily confused with a hummingbird. with wing beats of up to 50 per second and a tongue that seems impossibly long, they are distinctive moths. They can pollinate the most deep-throated flowers in the tropical forest. These strong flyers zoom through the understory and above the canopy. They are important long-distance pollinators of plants that are in low densities. Their large eyes have facilitated research on insect vision Many of the adults have flash colors to scare away a predator. Hawk moth caterpillars are easily distinguished because of their large size and by a hook-like protuberance on the rear end. Some of their caterpillars are excellent mimics of snakes. This family of day-flying Lepidoptera have eggs and caterpillars similar to some butterflies, but the wings hook together like moths. One infamous moth is commonly encountered in bottles of mezcal. This caterpillar, not a worm, inhabits agave hearts and ends up in mezcal as a Mexican tradition, supposedly acting as an aphrodisiac. This tropical family of medium to large moths that have wide wings often have conspicuous tails. They also have really, really hairy eyes. The last family includes the green urania, or colipato, which is a famous day-flying moth. The colipato is known for its massive migrations that pass through Costa Rica by the hundreds of thousands between August and November. This phenomenon is probably in response to changes in the availability of its host plant, a vine in the Euphorbiaceae plant family. Batwing or scoopwing moths are a subfamily of the uranids that have irregular wing margins and dark colors. While moths can lay waste to your garden, they play an important part in the balance of nature. Dude, check out the antenna on this thing. So the next time you see a mess of moths around the patio light, take a closer look. <laughs>